Hi guys, if it's Tuesday, it's Dan and Dirty Woodscraft. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about skill. And this is one of those skills that's so simple, and yet, it's kind of subtle in that. Now let's talk about, for a moment, any skill. Okay? Any skill you care to mention has two components, mental and muscle. Mental is me looking at you demonstrating this skill and go, oh, I can do that. Yeah, that's just this and this. That's the mental clarity to understand what the skill entails. The other part is the muscle part, and that's something often overlooked. That is the muscle memory, the practice, the whatever, that the body knows exactly how to perform whatever the function is that you're trying to perform. So I look at a pilot with hundreds of hours of experience sitting there in the cockpit of a helicopter and go, oh, that's easy. All they're doing is just holding on two sticks and, you know, yonder it goes. No, it's a whole lot more complicated than that. But some skills are simple, okay? But it's the muscle memory. I could read a book about how to fly that helicopter and know every button and all the theory, but grabbing a hold of the actual sticks and not having the muscle memory to control them in the smooth, rhythmic order would probably cause me to crash, okay? So what skill are we talking about today? Well, this is a skill for common beginners, and that skill is the fire rod, the ferro rod, and how that rod works. So let's set up and let's talk about the fire rod for just a minute. Okay, now let us talk about technique, okay? We've got a ferro rod here. Now these are like the ones that you just start out with, okay? When I start out teaching students, it's one like this is what I usually do. There are different uh, sizes, thicknesses of rods, and later on you're probably going to want a bigger one. But for right now, in the early learning curve, I recommend one of these little big ones like the Light My Fire style or whatever, okay? Notice I went and added a lanyard loop to it. That's important. One, it allows me to hang it inside my haversack so I can find it easy. And two, it allows me to put my hand through it. And the lanyard's just long enough that when I come up here and grip it, see, it's also holding tension, so it's not going to come out of my hand because that lanyard, okay? Now, you need some sort of scraping tool, something that's got a 90 degree spine. And with that, we're going to put it up here and we're going to bear down and rock back and forth. So we kind of cut that crust and get down into the edge of the rod, okay? When we do that, we put it down at our target. We're going to do that in a minute. And then we're going to push the knife away at the same time pulling the bar back. Like that, you get a shower of sparks. Okay. But we want to focus those sparks. I have seen it where guys have done it and they have a big old wad of burning material stuck to their knife. Well, that ain't in the middle of it, you know. If that's the case, I want to do it and push the knife against the tinder to catch it on fire. And at the same time, I don't want to be doing this and throwing sparks everywhere. I want my sparks focused on my target. So, like we said, there's mental and there's muscle. My muscle memory is how to grip it, how to support it. Now notice how I take my finger. I don't put it all the way to the tip because that heart spark is going to come off there and it might burn me. I come back about a half inch from that end and I grip it, okay, just like that. Now whenever I put up there and pull it, those sparks are going to go off that end and not burn my finger and my rod won't snap due to pressure, okay, because these rods can snap. They're a little bit brittle. So I rock, pull, rock, pull. Big old flash of sparks. Now, for you to get the muscle memory for this, you've got to practice. That's the reason I recommend just buying one of these cheap rods. You're going to wear this rod out, okay? I want you to practice with it in different conditions, in different situations, and learn what works best because that's how someone like Blackie or some of your other internet heroes step up there and we go, Shh, flames, life's beautiful. Well, we put in the time. We've got the muscle memory and the mental. 
We've got the experience. We've practiced it to the point, like Canterbury says, practice it, you can't do it wrong. And that takes time, but you need to practice. So, what do I recommend for you to practice with? The test medium that I recommend for my students to start off with is toilet paper. Burns easy, but you practice with this. Get out on the driveway, a patch of dirt, somewhere you're not going to burn the house down. Don't do this in your kitchen sink. <laughs> I had a student practicing it in the kitchen sink, and then they set off the smoke alarm. So, you want to do this. Like right now, it's 96 and about 85% humidity. You want to do this somewhere where when you have flame, it's not going to go anywhere. And these are going to be the, the action we're testing, the action we're training is the rod, not once the ignition is started. That's another class. That's how to build a fire. But I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to practice sparking it. So let me set this up right quick. Okay. I've got me a place selected out. It's not going to matter if a little bit of fire gets started. I'm going to take and roll me off, say, a foot and a half or so of toilet paper. And I'm going to take, shred it up a little for surface area, like that. And I'm going to put it wherever I'm wanting to target, okay, right here. Now, if I stay up here in the air and throw sparks, it's a real hit or miss as you can see, because they're going to hit land but go out. They may or may not catch it. If I get down here close and I focus, I may or may not. If I get in the middle of it and do it, then it catches easy. So the option of the game here is to practice. Start out with it and see how far away I've got to be to get it to catch. Focus your target. Let it, you know, burn for just a second. It'll burn just a few seconds, that little. And then you stamp it out and move on. As long as your surface right here does not matter, like a driveway or a, even one of those paving bricks in the back or a back patio, it's not going to hurt anything. And when it gets done, there's nothing left to worry about for cleanup. So this is a good testing medium. I want to practice ignition with this rod. So... Practicing the muscle memory, practicing the mental outlook of how to hold it, how far away. Is it better if it's jumbled up? Is it better if it's a little looser? All of those can be taught by that simple medium. I'm going to be able to light probably 100 fires, 150 fires with that roll practicing. Yes, it's super simple, but we're building knowledge and muscle memory right now. What we're doing here is learning how to use the rod, learning how to focus the spark at my target and get the results I want. Now whenever I get where I burned up that entire row, now I want to try something else. Now collect natural material around the yard, some grass. Do the same thing, jumble it up. Maybe I need to add a little bit of toilet paper to it to get it to catch. It might be damp or, you know. I will gather up a natural bird's nest, get in my same position, and now, again, I will practice whoosh because I've got this skill beginning. I've got the idea. Now I don't have to focus on this. Now I don't have to focus on how I'm holding or how I'm fo uh, firing. Now I'm focusing on the next step, which is my tender. You see what I'm saying? So... Skills are built like bricks, one atop the other. And I have seen many times people that would skip a step considering it too simple, too childish. I'm not going to worry about that. It, it, you just do that. Like looking at that pilot of that helicopter. All he's doing is just sitting there and running two sticks. I mean, use your feet and do this, and that's all you got to do. A little more complicated. Learning how to run this is a little more complicated than that. But with practice, you can get very good with it. Now also, and that was the WCNK, by the way, for those who's going to ask. It's one of my favorite crafting knives. On my bigger sheath, which is for my Blackbird, I carry a bigger rod. And this is one I got from Randy at Stitchgear.com. And it's a nice, big 
rod. And see how thick that rod is compared to the standard rod. Much different in thickness. This will allow me to throw a much more powerful shower of sparks and allow me to get tinder that's a little damp going by sheer heat that I can generate coming off of this bigger rod. But that's a later technique. Once you get the basics down of how to control the rod, how much pressure, what angle, how far up do I need to be, what position do I need to be, that's the important part of this step. Because once I've got that brick in place, it's easy to step up to the next brick, and the next brick is my tender. And when I step up to the next brick, and finally I'm going to get to tenders that are a little hard for that little bitty rod. It just don't throw enough sparks at a time to ignite. And that's when a big rod. It's reason you see a lot of the big names carrying big rods, because man, it throws a molten metal. Wah! Volcano coming off. I can take tender that's a little damp. It's a little green. It's a little not perfect. And get it. But I've got the metal and the muscle memory dialed in. Now I'm just plugging in what's the materials. See? And all from a simple cheap rod and a roll of toilet paper, you can learn the basic skill. And from that basic skill, you build one brick at a time. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.